So I saw this on the fashion law earlier on today because I remember I think I saw an article about it earlier um, on Twitter. But obviously I wanted to see what the fashion journalist had to say about this and get dive on deep. It did make me laugh a little bit, right? So um, there's this story that came out. Um, and the headline is, this is on the, the fashionlaw.com, one of my sites that I kind of go to for all kind of fashion industry sort of stuff. If you want to learn about trademarks, if you want to learn about copywriting, if you want to learn about uh, people stealing other people's designs, you want to learn about moves within the fashion industry, you want to learn about merchandising, business, investment, all that stuff, all that stuff that kind of the background stuff that you love in here, you know, because fashion is full of, we love all these kind of industry new stuff, right? And um, it's all well and good following your main designers, your creative directors, your art directors, your stylists, whoever they may be. But the ones that I kind of want to hear about is that the movers and shakers who's behind who's who's pulling all the strings and making these things happen or making them not happen so this headline came out the other day um which made me laugh um which should have made me laugh but it says that uh, machino has a code word for black shoppers according to a damning lawsuit so machino which has had the resurgence underneath jeremy scott who's kind of you know um up the kind of campness and uh uh, the showmanship of Machino, who's kind of turned it into a bit of a pastiche of itself. Um, it's sort of, you, you're not sure if you're in on the joke or if the joke is on you for the stuff that you buy, whether it's iPhone covers, whether it's handbags, whether it's trousers, jumpers. There's little funny pokes that he's taking at the industry and at himself and at the customers that buy it that sometimes make you feel like you've been taking the piss out of. But in the most part, everyone kind of has, you know, a, a lot of time for Machino because, you know, they've kind of, he's done a good job in terms of uh, reigniting a brand in a contemporary way without it being overtly referential without it being overtly pastiche which kind of is a bit um contradictory to what i said earlier but it kind of skirts on that line i think it's operating that line it does a good job of it um so um and the most part the only people that you do see wearing the the, the brand of course and again this is only my my experience anecdotally talking from my perspective living in london the only people i see wearing machine are asian people and that would be specifically chinese um students that come over who love the cover kind of the covers who might love some of the little trinkets you put on bags the handbags themselves or the jumpers sometimes the shoes um i see a lot of people wearing that and the other people i see who are wearing it are maybe black people and then the other group of people i see wearing it are the kind of wavy garments crew people right who specifically aren't you know they're probably majority white but you know there's people in there that are are from other backgrounds but for the most part they are only fond of kind of old school archive machino vintage machino for the most part they're not necessarily into stuff jeremy scott is doing but sometimes you've seen them kind of mix and blend some stuff in together but those are the people i see wearing those kind of things right so it's not it usually isn't the people that they have on their own ways for them for instance right it usually doesn't whatever they want it to look like machino jeremy scott it doesn't look like that in the street it looks completely different it's one of those weird brands i think similar to like balmain right um you remember when balmain jeans were big um the people that you see wearing them were rappers and they're wearing them in a very rapper way but when you saw barman jeans on the runway they look nothing like how they were being styled in real life like they completely took them out of any sort of context but i mean wanting to put them in right whether it's that kind of you know very well to do uh posh parisian uh player or flipping batch or whatever it was it was just put in the context of like these guys in the hood like these how these jeans fit they like the fact that they had those kind of motorcycle knees on the front do you know what i mean there's they, they they didn't care how it was being styled in there and i think machine was the same sort of way they wanted to look one way they wanted to look like this kind of reference to 80s um hollywood do you know what I mean? When money was flowing in, when the coke was coming over from Colombia or uh, whatever it may be, but it doesn't look like that in real life. So it's always funny whenever you see those kind of brands who want to look like one thing, but then their customers tell them, no, 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 this is what we want it to say. And then they then have a disparity with how they kind of, the customers that come into the store doesn't necessarily match up to how they want their client to look like. And this obviously um, article kind of points towards it. So this is an article that I saw in um, the fashion law. I'm going to try and get up on the screen here, actually make it full screen so everyone can see it. Transform, fit to screen, boom, boom, boom. So this article is on fashion law. I'll get up on here now. The fashion law machine has had a code word for black shoppers, according to a damning lawsuit. Uh, machine has, ha has a code word for black shoppers, according to a damning lawsuit uh, filed against the American arm of the Italian fashion brand. Former machine employee, Shalmei uh, Latadel, Lat Lat Latelade, 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 yeah, um, who filed a lengthy complaint against the brand in California. Um, state court on Friday claims that Ra Rana Selbach, a manager, was Hollywood Los Angeles based machine output, who is named as a defendant in the case called non celebrity black shopper Serena and would encourage staff members to closely watch and even follow them. So, this is, in, this is a, a machinist store in West Hollywood, right? 
And I would assume most, you know, I've been to LA only once, don't get me wrong. And I went to that area. And for the most part, people who are shopping there, you know, especially in those kind of stores like Machino, aren't going to be white, right? They're going to be from wherever. Or if they are going to be white, not going to be conventional. Um, they're not going to be middle of America white. They might be white European. They might be Russian. They might be um, uh, Eastern European. They might be Middle Eastern, right? Or whatever it may be. I won't say Middle East people are white. Don't get me wrong. But they're not necessarily... Anyway, so this is strange. So this manager had something against black shoppers who weren't celebrities. And he called them Serena. It's a code word. But Serena, what is that? Serena Williams? What, what's Serena Williams do? Serena Williams Jack something back in the day. We don't know. So Miss uh, Latterdale, who had been employed by Machino as a sales supervisor since June 2015, asserts that she was wrongfully terminated last spring. Following an ongoing and atrocious harassment and discrimination based on her status as a black Haitian American woman, in addition to Machino's regional manager, uh, Rana Selbach allegedly stealing some 4% of her commissions, refusing to give her mandatory vacation or clothing allowance. This is standard retail. All retail managers are like this, isn't it? Some re not all, but there is a big segment of retail managers who are just fucking dickheads, isn't it? They just do this. This is just this is something they always enjoy, right? Taking your commission, taking a Kyvel commission, not giving you a holiday when you want your holiday, when you book it way in advance. All this not. I remember with one manager that used to do that, um, in a shop I used to work at before, who was kind of like I was. I was always kind of prepared with my holidays because I knew eventually, you know, eventually I knew I didn't want to work in a workplace anywhere. I wanted to have to do my own thing. I didn't want to have to be employed for the worst part. So I always had the mindset of like, if I'm going to have a job, I'm going to give myself a reward, right? And the reward was either you're going to, every time you get paid by it or something nice, or at least try and schedule in two days of holiday per month, right? Even if you're not going to go anywhere and you're just going to stay in your house, just do it. Just because it's going to make the job worthwhile. It's going to give you a bit of distance. It's going to give you a bit of perspective. You can go away from work, kind of close your laptop and kind of get out there and brew out world and come back and, you know, have more energy to kind of go about things. So I always, I always have to, I would always put my holiday in um, ahead of time because, you know, just in case, even if I didn't go to the festival, even if I didn't go on my holiday, I would just have the date free anyway. So sometimes these managers would be at dickheads who would kind of punish the people who would who were more prepared or who had foresight and tell you, even though you submitted your summer holidays in February, you have to wait until fucking April when everyone else did theirs or, or until you got all the requests in to, for, them, for them to approve you. And then by the time it came around to approve, guess what? Yours wasn't approved. Dickheads, right? Those managers always exist. I don't know why. It's just a thing. I don't know if it's a power trip or whatever it may be, but there's something about a retail manager um, that just they just have this I don't know and again I, I don't know whether it's just not their fault I mean, maybe it's just an idea of like as soon as someone asks you permission for something you just you just suddenly you get the urge to say no or to like throw up a barrier because they're asking you permission you feel like you got power like oh you you're asking me permission oh okay that means I'm important right and then suddenly you start to get on your high horse start to black like, you know put your shoulders back and you start to get a bit a bit pointy and all that malarkey i don't know if it's that or i don't know if it's just like generally the profile of somebody that will do a job like that a retail manager who kind of look after 27 odd staff who change every fucking year right because of the retention rate in those kind of industries isn't that high people are always come and coming in and out in and out it probably has to be a certain type of profile right you can't be the most well adjusted human being to kind of do a job probably it's probably not the best way to go about it i don't know but those managers are dickheads um big, big up the good ones but big up the dickheads too or don't big up the dickheads actually fuck the dickheads so this suit continues um let's get up on here so it continues um da -da 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 -da. Uh, hostile environment starback racial and aminus was clear according to the complaint uh so t t um, she would verbally abuse latter day calling her names yelling and berating her standard in particular latter day states that celibate called her ghetto and a thief woohoo and she practiced voodoo due to her haitian heritage jesus christ i think when you work in a place and the manager's calling you a calling you ghetto or saying you're a thief or you know anytime someone has to call you names i think it's done you have to just hand in your resignation and walk i think i don't know how people honestly like I think I've mentioned it a few times, you know, people um, who kind of, you know, have this, you know, um, that hold employment up on this, you know, hallowed turf and put jobs up on a pedestal and will kind of, you know, um, uh, forsake any kind of morality, any kind of dignity in order to kind of keep their job. I've never really got that. I, I never really got that thing. But again, when you get older, you start to realize people have responsibilities. Sometimes stuff, the work, the job that you're doing has a big responsibility outside of yourself. You have to kind of take yourself out of it, not be so selfish, blah, 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 blah. Right? I understand that. No problem. Sometimes you have to swallow some things, you know, to kind of get to where you want to get to. And, you know, sometimes you have to just work where you have to work. No biggie. But I think once it gets to the point of name calling, 
especially in managerial terms and all that sort of stuff, I think it's it's the beginning or the end. It's like um, imagine if you had an argument with somebody you work with, and it suddenly got to blows. And one time outside of work, don't get me wrong, it did happen at work, but outside of work, you go into a fisty fight. Like you can't then go back into work and suddenly everything be okay. You know what I mean? It's bad enough when you have an argument with a customer and you have to work the next day. How it plays on your mind or how annoyed that you are. Da, 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 da. Imagine with a staff member. Imagine then you come to blows. Imagine it's a manager. Imagine they're calling you names. I just think at that point, you have to really look at your options and really assess whether or not this is the be best place for you to be because like it or not, in those instances, when it comes to manager or employee, usually more likely than not, even if you're in the right, even if you're in the right, even if you did nothing wrong and this person is just hammering you and telling you all kind of nonsense and trying to, um, what do you call it? Trying to put the blame on you and whatever it may be. Even if these things are true, even if, if these things are true, you are always going to be the one to get fired. That's what's going to happen. It's not going to be the other way around. Not going to work the other way around. No one else is going to fire the other person. They're going to fire you, 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 you. You're the one that's you're the one that's dispensable. Because managers, for the most part, they're quite hard to come by. Especially the good ones in retail. Especially the ones that don't mind doing the job. Especially the ones that want to do the, want to get involved in firefights. So they're always going to side with the manager, unfortunately. So I think when everyone's name calling you, just hop the fuck out. Get out. Get out there as soon as possible and find something else to do. I think, in my opinion, again, this is just me talking. Anyway, let's continue on. Um, she called her ghetto. She said she practiced voodoo because she's from because she's from Haiti, and on more than one occasion drew attention to her natural kinky hair, which um, the manager allegedly said was not a professional look. Fucking hell, that's mad, isn't it? Well, we, we, you do hear a few times. I remember hearing it at Salvages too. The guys have to kind of like make sure they get haircuts. They don't. They don't essentially say you can't have an afro, but you have to keep it well kept in that regard, which is understandable. If you're working in a luxury department store, you can't have your hair looking dusty or messy with it, maybe. But to berate somebody because their hair isn't relaxed in a kind of western european way is nonsense I, I hopefully it's not that hopefully it's just a look of like look come on trim your edges ma i mean get some ha um hair and tail on your what you got or whatever that thing is on your on your hair whatever but if it's something talking about how your natural look isn't nice then i'm not with that at all such racially motivated harassment allegedly extended beyond um Beyond letter though to Machino customers as well. As set forth in the compliance, so back and forth, she is spilling all the tea, this girl, bruv. Everyone's getting it. So um the the sales assistant um or super sales supervisor, sorry, um enforced no, the manager, sorry, enforced a specific protocol when a black individual who was not a celebrity did not have an outward appearance of money via diamonds or name brands. Jesus Christ. And who she believed couldn't afford the items in the store, entered into the store. In addition to the Serena code word, Selbeck would take pictures of their license place in the store parking lot and recommended that others also do the same. Jesus Christ. Um do the same thing, would refuse to pull them items from the back from them for to try on and would uh, engage in other acts that cause them to feel de degra degradation, humiliation, harassment, and discrimination. That is fucking awful. That is awful. That is awful. Number one, of course, I think we've known for the longest time there has been a... I've worked in retail, so I've kind of seen it from both ends. I know there's been a lot of discrimination towards people who don't look like they have got money in order to buy the items in your store, whether they're black, white, whatever. Any store you work in, especially in London, they always have that um, at the forefront of their mind, which is why most stores you walk into, they'll have a random person standing next to the um the scanners on the front of the door greeting you they're not greeting you because they like you they want to say hello it's usually it's kind of a a, a deterrent for any shoplifters right because the idea is that it, which is a which is a flawed idea right because if you want to steal you're going to smart like the best um pickpockets the best thieves out there are the most charismatic ones the ones that you have no idea they're doing it and i even remember there was a video actually um i remember seeing a video of kunle uh, it's not from Iraq, um, the 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 legendary um, New York City graffiti crew. I remember he was saying something along the times of like when he's racking, which is you know going to stores and stealing graffiti um, graffiti cans. I remember him saying something along the lines of the best way to do it is to engage the cust, it's to engage the owner, like get into a conversation, talk, you know what I mean, act completely normal, like you know, like an everyday folk going in there with like you know with your snapback pulled over your eyelids, like some movie or something, trying to avoid the cameras is probably the worst way to go shop if anything. But anyway, I digress. So in stores have someone standing next to the doors um waiting for you to come out or wait you know just stand there for instance saying hi you think they're saying hi because they like you know it's because it's the terror if you're a thief the idea is that if someone says hi to and acknowledges your presence it's going to put you off from seeing something so that obviously is flawed dumb idea but they also extend that to you know people that don't look like they're going to shop in that brand in that company or that brand but it happens a lot in some sense you can take it it's similar to that experience i remember my little brother had when he went for an interview in Brick Lane for a skate shop that he didn't know was a skate shop, right? He sent in a, no, he sent in a CV 
I think he just didn't know what to wear, so he went he went safe and wore a suit, which is fucking nuts. Imagine going to a skate store and wearing a suit. So he turned up there and wore a suit to, to have an interview for the role. I think it was a skate store. I forgot what this, there's a streetwear store. So no skate store. What I forgot what that store was called. It's across the road from Rough Trade. It's opposite Rough Trade in Brick Lane on Truman. Is it Truman Brick? Wherever that thing is. Um, and he went there in a suit to have an interview. And of course, my brother, little brother, having been around me, knows most of the things that these kids know about stuff. But his look straight away kind of screamed some guy that was once the be a salesman next right he didn't look like he, he knew anything about the culture so of course immediately he got judged he had a good interview he said he spoke really well about the brands that he likes and blah blah but the suit just like you know the moment you walk into that three second rule thing right about you know we make our impression of somebody in three seconds the immediate look is so him in a suit ill-fitting with some fucking shitty wallabies automatically they thought he doesn't get the culture when he obviously does get the culture and the same could be said for the luxury designer brands, right? They will, you walk into the store, they'll think it because you're not wearing something from the past season because you don't have anything fashionable on that obviously you don't want to, you know, you don't know what's going on in there and you're obviously only in there to cause mischief. Now, I'll give them some kind of bell, right? Because sometimes, sometimes it can be true. It can be true that the people that do go into the store who look the most shiftiest are going to do the shiftiest things. I've worked in retail and unfortunately sometimes, you know, it is it is our own people from some extent. But I would also say that most of the time these people that are coming from outside of the kind of culture, let's say, who are black, who are whatever, who are brown and want to shop in these places, they are shopping, they are kind of shopping there as they'll shop anywhere else, right? They don't need, they don't feel the need to kind of dress up for you or to kind of impress you, to kind of make you feel like comfortable that, hey, I can afford what is in there. And plus, these customers really hold your brand up to high esteem. So if someone is coming in there from the hood get wearing a tracksuit, maybe give that kid a chance because he might have saved up all his money to come and splurge it on Machino. That's just a fucking shit brand anyway, if, to be honest, right? For kids. But imagine, he's the one that's making your brand cool. He's going to take your jeans that you want worn one way, wear it another way, everyone's going to wear them and then they're going to sell out, right? Then what happens? Are you going to then stop the kids coming in buying those particular jeans? Are you going to pretend you don't have them in the back anymore? doesn't make any sort of sense whatsoever. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And there's plenty of occasions you hear of people purposely going to side stop in, in tight shores, stores, sorry, whether they're CEOs or founders or even really rich people wealthy from wealthy families purposely going in dressed a certain way in order to see how the how the cuss how the sales actually treat customers and this preferential treatment is fucking crazy because you know you can't really judge anyone by the what they're what they're wearing sometimes in my experience working in retail sometimes the people that are war have are dressed the best who have the best stuff on are usually the the, the biggest dicks right because they're entitled they have they have they're 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 expecting a level of service right and they want you to meet that level of service which is sometimes super lofty sometimes you can meet it but they come in there with an attitude they have their nose up in the air do you know what i mean like they're the worst people to serve in all in all honesty so this is fucking insane and again the invasion of privacy taking pictures of people's license plates in the parking lot ah, what are you doing what you doing man manage the store why are you at the back taking pictures of people's f fucking cars well, what the fuck is that going to do? Absolute psycho. Absolute psycho. And again, if you had a good lawyer, imagine you stole something from a machine store. You ran, you ducked out, right? The car was in another place and you got out. But the manager happened to walk down the street, take a picture of your thing, come back in again. Your lawyer could probably argue and get you off of it on a technicality because this, this fucking person invaded your privacy and took a picture of your license plate without your knowledge. Now, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? Anyway, um, it continues. Um... The article says here, in addition to the Serena code word, which I don't really get as well. What's the Serena thing? Why Serena? Serena Williams is an amazing um, um, icon of sports of sportsmen all over the place. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't get the Serena thing. Um, Sabak would take pictures of the car. Da, da, da. I mean, late Mar in late March 2018, one day after she contacted Machino's corporate staff for the second time in light of this continued discriminatory harassing and regulatory behavior, Sabak claims that she fired her. Imagine, this, this is the thing that's always annoying though, isn't it, right? This is what shows you about the lack of morality. That's why sometimes with these public freakout videos, you know, the videos of people where they're like, you know, they're in shops and they're like, oh, I'm recording you. I'm going to say, oh, you, I can't wait until I get this on YouTube. I can't wait until I get this on corporate. It's annoying and these guys are dicks. Sometimes, you know, you can sometimes think, you know, they're the biggest pussies in the world. But I get it when they say that because sometimes these companies that act really quickly and fire people, right? Like that lady at, at Chipotle that we saw a video of a few weeks ago, um, these black kids come into Chipotle or these kids in general come into Chipotle they're trying to order some you know some Chipotle wrap whatever and then um of course the manager is overheard you can see this, as the video starts the manager's overheard saying to them that um they they, they, they won't be able to serve those kids and, and to unfortunately they won't serve them um until they pay first right which is not something that happens to Chipotle similar to Subway right you order your thing first and then you pay at the end and everyone and then the kids are like oh my god why why is it because I'm black they're, they're saying stuff right and you're like oh shit 
This woman's discriminating against these kids, right? Making them pay for a rap when everyone else is paying at the end. So then, it, you know, the video goes viral and then the Chipotle manager gets fired. Cool, everyone's fine. Social justice wins again. Then it kind of comes out, the story comes out that supposedly these kids were, I think the story comes out that I think someone found the tweets of those kids who recorded the video, old tweets, and they say something along the lines of they go to shops on purpose, like, you know, and they go and order things and then run out. That's the thing that they do, whether it's a game, whether it's somewhere to get free food, whatever it may be, or to become viral hits on the internet. They do this occasion all the time, right? So that manager was, has experience with those kids and was making sure that, you know, risk what's that called um loss prevention would make sure to don't lose much stock she's like saying i know you guys you come here all the time you have to pay first but we lost that in in the context of it we just saw this manager discriminating against these black kids and we automatically went to a conclusion and that happens a lot sometimes so sometimes these companies are quick to fire people but they don't they don't act on the time what happens i'm sure that manager complained a couple of times to corporate hey we've got these kids out coming in they're stealing all the thing what can we do the corporate didn't want to touch didn't want to touch it and the moment it comes out it goes a viral they make an action and all suddenly stand on their fucking morality high horse so i mean she knows the same sort of thing i'm sure that she complained many plenty of times of corporate um to about the manager which is hard to do i'm assuming you know complaining about a manager and saying they're treating you wrongly isn't gonna be the best thing is gonna really you know um is going to really endear you to the staff members. I'm sure she complained, but nothing happened. And now look, now it's all of a sudden it's going to court. Machine's getting dragged in the mud. Reputation's getting destroyed. Fucking crazy. Anyway, it continues. Um, da, da, da. So she was fired. And later, da, da, da. so she was fired saying, tomorrow will be your last day due to the sequence of events. Contact corporate like you have been doing. Crazy, this manager. And absolute, absolute um, balls of steel. As a result of foregoing... Of the, of the foregoing, Latitude has set forth 17 different claims, including breach of conduct, race harassment, discrimination, religious harassment, discrim and discrimination, gender harassment, everything harassed, harassment. Jesus Christ, she is seeking monetary damage, including triple damages since the defendant's misconduct was committed intentionally in a malicious, oppressive, fraudulent manner. Machina has said in a statement it complies with amicable employment loss, prevents uh, values, and respectable customers. Jesus Christ, the lawsuit comes two years after the Versace employee filed a lawsuit against the Italian brand. Yeah, man, they're fucking done. They they are done. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. And that manager's probably still employed by Machino, isn't suspended due pending investigation, still there talking shit. And again, these brands, man, this is, this is what I'm saying. These and it comes from the top down. This is not this is not just the manager's fault. This is something that comes from the culture of that company overall. Where a manager feels like they can do this. Like that culture exists. Like when you it's like when you remember when Steve Jobs was around. Nowadays it's not so much the same thing. But when you used to work into going to an Apple store, how happy, clappy everyone was, right? The cult of fucking Apple. You go in there, people will be super stoked about working in the store. They love technology, they love Apple. It's similar to that extent now, don't get me wrong, but it's waned. It's not as like happy clappy it was before in the start. But that kind of culture started from the top down, right? That was corporate taking a very uh taking a lot of interest into how the tone of the store reflected everything that they do with the company overall so if, so when you're hearing these kind of stories don't think it's i say don't think this manager and machine in west hollywood is just acting on her own she's obviously or he whatever the person is i'm not sure if it's a, if it's a girl or not ran so i'm not sure if it's a girl or whatever right this manager is taking on the cues that's happening from corporate whether it's how they treat their whether it's how they refer to their customers in china whether it's how they refer to their customers in europe whether it has to refer to middle east customers that's why i always had a bit it's always Leave a sour taste in my mouth whenever I work somewhere and you'd have a group channel where people would be complaining about customers or like posting stuff of what they said and stuff. It always kind of let the sour taste in my mouth because in general, it you know, it's, it, there is stuff you can laugh about, but I think in general, laughing at customers can sometimes breed a little bit of discontent, of contempt in general. Do you know what I mean? Like you can kind of, and that can kind of seep into the way you treat them, the way you service them on the app itself or the service, whatever it may be. And in general, like I said, I, I just think, I wish there would be more of a stand. I wish some black people would take a stand against these brands that don't support you. If they don't support you, don't back them, right? Similar to what the Hen Henny Palooza uh, stuff did, right? Um, that party in, in America where they tried to get sponsorship with Henny Palooza, with, with Henny, Henny do say whatever, Henny, yeah, yeah Henny, um, but they did, didn't want to do it or they backed out, whatever it may be. And then they went to do say, which was owned by, you know, Jay-Z and all that malarkey. And they kind of like, you know, bought into that whole idea and were able to kind of sponsor their events and become the official drink sponsor. So much so that now the event's called Do Say Palooza, right? And that whole idea comes from the idea of like, these guys don't want you, right, to be promoting their brand. They want to be associated with our culture, but they want to take our money. They want to make sure, you know, they, they they love reaping the rewards of it. They love having it in the videos and stuff, but they don't want to send you any free products. They don't have any official collaborations with you. Then fuck them all to hell, right? Only support the ones that are supporting you. 
But unfortunately, sometimes, I don't know, I think our morality compasses are a bit skewed. In the same way how you're seeing with this R. Kelly documentary, you know, his kind of streaming numbers have spiked since the documentary has kind of aired. More and more people want to go see him live in shows. People are defending him. Women in in general, too. It, I don't know what people's morality. So I'd, I'd like to see people take a stand and be like, you know what? Fuck it. No more machinery until they get the practices in order, until they kind of root out this kind of um, discrimination in their stores because it happens all over the place. Right? I can go to St. Laurent tomorrow and be dressed like a I don't listen to indie music or I don't care about who Heidi Semen was previously and I would get discriminated in. I, would, I, I could do probably the same thing going to Balenciaga, which is a very kind of, you know, youth oriented uh, fashion brand, which is primarily worn by people that are black or brown or yellow for the most part. And I would get discriminated against. So, I mean, there are these things that happen a lot. And it doesn't make any sense because the people that are making your brand popular, who are kind of make people coming in there and want to buy the stuff or saving money up or saving however measly wages they get in for six, seven, eight, nine, twelve months to kind of purchase that one thing you know they're the ones that make it popular and you come in there and you're treating them absolute shit and because they're you know new slaves as Kanye West says because we're so um we're so attached to the brand not even the fucking designer or the store we care about the brand so much we're, we're willing to forego it remember that story of Tory Lanez in a super mall somewhere in Canada I don't know where it was somewhere in a mall and he got discriminated against in the shop and he came back the next day and spent I don't know 30 racks whatever $30,000 and kind of you know was sniggering at stuff you know like who won there really did he won because he come back with more money and showed them that he could buy it for the stuff or the day one because ultimately he's giving them their money do you know what I mean capitalism always wins in that respect so yeah um disgusting behavior for machino um disgusting behavior for the man disgusting this behavior from the company of rule because they're the ones that are making the manager feel like that kind of action that kind of discriminating behavior is okay and i just wish people take more of a stand this girl's gonna fucking cash out i'm sure she is so that, um, that i have no problem with um but yeah i wish people would take more of a stand against it but i know they're not that people don't really care about these kind of things over in general as long as they can get their thing that's what they care about. But hey, ho, ho. We can only hope. We can only hope.